Leia gets frozen in carbonite on this week's episode of Star Wars Weekly. Hello everybody, it's Star Wars here. Welcome back to the channel. It's a wonderful time to be a Star Wars fan with all the comics, novels, TV series, and more coming out. I do my best every week to keep you guys up to speed on all of that content. This week, we have just one comic to talk about, but it's a big one. It is the flagship Star Wars comic series. This is issue number three for its second volume. We are in between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi. We are following Lando, Luke, and Leia. They are going back to Cloud City. But before we do that, we focus on the beginning of this issue of this brand new villain in Star Wars, Commander Zara. And she is ruthless, and we learned a lot about her backstory and about the crew of her Star Destroyer, which is an awesome name, by the way, the Tarkin's Will. So this is all about just what makes her her, right? So we learn about the ship and about how the Star Destroyer is damaged. It has literally like a scar on the Star Destroyer. We learn about the Star Destroyer was hit by debris from the Death Star, and she likes to keep that damage on the Star Destroyer as a reminder to both her crew and the Rebels that, hey, this makes us stronger. And the fact that the one officer wanted to fix that, that's how it's, you know, it spurs on this whole conversation. So to see the passion of Zara, to see that she was being mentored by Tarkin himself is just a really cool connection to the events of A New Hope. First off, I didn't realize that there were Star Destroyers nearby the Death Star. I mean, obviously they didn't think about putting them in when they made A New Hope. So it's kind of like a little cool retcon where it's like, yeah, there was some ships around the Death Star, as you would expect being the biggest thing in the Empire at that point. But to learn that every one of her crewmates had people that died aboard the Death Star and about how they are sworn to the allegiance of Commander Zara by this passion of theirs to get revenge for the people that were taken out of their lives and to picture Leia as more of a, a terrorist from her eyes is just super compelling. It's a super unique take on the Empire and I really did enjoy getting that story. She almost kind of reminds me of Commander Zara of like Thrawn and about how he kind of um, gets his troops behind him and, and and to become very much uh, inspired by him. I can see that the same thing happening with her. So really cool opening up the story of issue number three with that. But then we do catch up with Luke, Leia, and Lando. They go back to Cloud City. And what's really neat about this is they each have a mission on Cloud City. We have Lando, who we find out goes to figure out about Lobot, about what her, where his whereabouts are. We have Luke, who is going there to get his lightsaber. And we have Leia who's going there apparently to find out how to unfreeze people out of carbonite. Before they get there, they do not have a, a warm welcome. We have the cloud cars, which are some of my favorite designs in Star Wars. Remember, they the Empire is controlling this cloud city after the Empire strikes back. And, well, even the people that are working for Bespin are being swayed by Lando because he's saying, hey, look, I'm the Baron Administrator. I'm coming back. Guys, just help me out. He does persuade them, and it's cool because... Lando literally has tricks up his sleeve with the defenses of Cloud City. He turns off the turbo lasers. He's able to crush stormtroopers underneath of doors. So lots of really cool tricks that you would expect Lando to have in place in case something like this happens. So really awesome stuff there. And then they all branch out. And we see that long-awaited uh, meeting um, reignite of uh, basically Lando and Lobot, right? Charles Soule, the writer of this comic, his first crack of Star Wars was the Lando miniseries in which we find that Lando and Lobot, their relationship was really way different before the Empire Strikes Back, and I cannot recommend reading that enough. So we see that Lobot is completely connected into the system, and it's Lando that is able to um, try to get the system of the, the gas and different things to get people a little scared, the Empire a little scared. And I'm, I'm really hoping we come to terms with Lobot and what happens. I'm a little bit worried that maybe the Lobot might die in some way with the Imperials finding out what's going on. Unfortunately, I don't feel like it's going to be a very happy ending for Lando since we never see Lobot after those events. Also, Leia, she's going into that same carbon freezing chamber that Han was frozen in. And then apparently the Empire is using the carbon freezing after Vader used it on Han Solo. More frequently, they're using it on rebels to, so they don't have to feed them as prisoners which is kind of 
uh, pretty evil, if you ask me. They're just freezing a bunch of people. And hey, we see in the Mandalorian show that they're more um, widespread with bounty hunters using that kind of device. Um, and then we see Luke going to the pits of Cloud City um, to where they collect all the metal that doesn't go down the shaft. And you see, it, it's like hopeless. Um, we don't get to see this mysterious force user that was calling to him in the force in this specific issue. But I hope we see this particular character in the next issue. But I really did like this issue. It kind of ended abruptly. Like, I was like, oh, this is it. You know, there's so much story packed into this issue. The way it just leaves off with Leia being frozen in carbonite. Let's talk about that for a minute. Leia being frozen in carbonite. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I mean, we have to wait and see what happens with the resolution of these events. But the fact that she was going there to find out how she's going to undo this whole thing with Han and she'll have first-hand experience of what it feels like to be frozen in carbonite on the next cover for the next issue. It looks like Vader finds Leia. I don't know how that's going to work. Is Vader literally going to go back to Cloud City? That is very interesting because we also have the ongoing Vader series. But another great issue that continues to push the boundaries for what we know about Star Wars, thanks to Charles. So, so what did you guys think about this issue of Star Wars issue number three? Let's talk about it in the comment section down below. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Project Luminous, the High Republic, but I do want to mention to you guys that it is awesome. It's something that I've been waiting for for a long time. If you guys have been following the channel, I've been talking about Star Wars comics and novels on pretty much a weekly basis, pretty consistently. So for me to find out that there's a publishing effort that is doing nothing but comics and novels in a completely different era, hundreds of years, it's not going to mess with any of the timeline. The, the, the writers can go and write as much as they want. The, the books and the comics are going to be so important in that era because we're not going to have any movies, we're not going to have any games, at least right now, this is the backbone, the phase one is going to be five uh different stories we got uh three books and two ongoing comics and that's just phase one so i'm so hyped i have my video for the announcements of all the details i also did a video on all the references in the canon so far of the high republic as we read star wars issue number two there was one they did mention starlight again in this which is that station that is going to be part of the the major disaster i guess or whatever it is they're calling it but if you guys want to know more about the High Republic, I'm going to be doing my best to do as often as maybe once a week videos pertaining to different elements of the High Republic in its lead up to its release on August 25th, right before Celebration. So I'm going to have something to read on the plane, which is going to be really, really good stuff. But that is not all we had this week. We have a Battlefront 2 update. It's going to involve the Age of Rebellion for co-op. And so many other big things in there that are awesome. And I have a live stream that I posted earlier. Uh, as of recording this, it would have been like yesterday by the time this video comes out. So make sure you check that out as well. I have some good video game uh, content on the channel after a while. So that is going to do it for me, Star What did you guys think of Star Wars issue number three? What are you thinking about the High Republic, Battlefront 2? Let's talk about it all in the comment section down below. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. I love to talk about Star Wars on a weekly basis. And if you guys too... To, to make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel as I always have these videos coming up on a weekly basis and it'll be a lot easier for you guys to keep track of what's coming out if you do hit that notification icon as well. That's gonna do it for me Star but thank you so much for watching and may the force be with you always. Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.